In the early 90s, when I was 6 or 7 years old, I was at home with my sister, who was 14 or 15 at the time. We grew up in a small Texas town. You know, one where everyone knows everyone. We were home alone one particular night, and my folks let my sister babysit me frequently. We always got along due to our age gap. It was about 8 p.m., so it was dark, and we were in the common room since that's where the TV was. We were watching 60 Minutes, or 48 Hours, something like that that was a one-hour news piece that chronicles large crimes and depth, trafficking, murders, kidnappings, and the like. This one was a typical story. Guy next door that was quiet and went on a rampage in his neighbor's house, mutilating them and kidnapping their young daughter. The thing about our house common room is, the door leading to the backyard was a large glass door on a wall of floor-to-ceiling windows. Nothing but blackness beyond it, unless you have the back light on, which we did not. The front door is on the other side of the room, with a small entryway. This is a solid door, so you cannot see beyond it. I should also mention that there is a large glass storm door on the outside of that. About 45 minutes into the show, they're talking about the ongoing manhunt for this crazy guy. And all of a sudden, the front door bangs like crazy. We jump the fuck up and scream like banshees. And then nothing. Dead silence. The only light on in the house is from the kitchen down the hall from the common room where we were staying, and the light from the TV. We start thinking something is on the porch. We had a lot of crazy planters and a rocking chair out there, and maybe it had simply blown against the door. This is West Texas, so there's always crazy strong winds out this way. After a minute or two of silence, and us holding each other for post-adrenaline overdose passes, just when we think we're about to declare everything is safe, we hear the storm door on the outside of our front door close. Fuck. Somebody had to have opened that door to be able to bang on the front door that way. Shit, shit, shit. We're both frozen in fear on the floor in the middle of the room where we'd been watching TV. My sister quickly crawled to the TV to turn it off. It was an old TV, so you had to turn that metal dial to switch it off which always made a loud thunk. Now it is just us in the room, dimly lit by the kitchen light down the hall. I do not remember how much time passed, with me frozen in fear and my sister still crouched by the TV, now turned off. But we kept making eye contact with each other, then looking back at the front door. I remember this part vividly. I am on my knees, sitting on my feet, and I turn around to look at the back wall of windows and the glass door to the backyard. We hear and I see the back doorknob turn. It was locked on the knob, but not dead bolted. It rattles slightly as if somebody is gently trying the handle. Neither of us make a sound, just held our breath. Then, loud as all hell, somebody is trying to force the door open just by jerking it back and forth. The whole wall of windows is vibrating violently, and I can see with each jerk of the door how my reflection gets fuzzy, clear, and then fuzzy again. Terrified, I can't move. All of a sudden, my sister flips her shit and screams bloody murder. I am still frozen on the floor. She gets up and basically drags me into her bedroom, slams the door, throws her mattress and anything she can in front of her door. Thankfully, she had remembered the phone, one of those ungodly heavy beige plastic long metal antenna portable phones. From where we lived, we had to direct dial the sheriff, and in the middle of all the commotion, my sister couldn't remember the number. In a panic, she just hit redial on the phone. Luckily, it rang one of her friends, and she tells them in broken gasps that somebody is trying to get into our house, and needs them to get there right fucking now. The profanity sticks out here more often than anything else. Who knows, maybe it was just my young brain. At this point, I'm curled up on the floor and cannot stop shaking. We don't hear anything else until we see the headlights of my sister's friend and her parents driving up to the house. We never did find out who was at the door or why. But there were no signs of anything happening but a couple of scuff marks on the bottom of the back door. We could not remember if they were there before this incident or not. Nothing like that has ever happened to me or her since, but for damn sure, 
we never forgot to lock the back door after that. I was sitting at home one night with my mother back when I was in high school. We were just sitting in our living room, about to call it a night after watching a movie marathon on TV. While laughing about a stupid commercial we had just seen before turning off the television, my mother quickly shifted from a happy smiling face to a very serious and nervous looking stare behind me. There was a hall that led to the opposite side of the house, and I was too afraid to turn around and look at what she was seeing. Scared instantly since I had never seen this look on my mother's face before, I asked, What's wrong? She didn't answer or acknowledge me in the slightest. After a moment, she called out to my sister Claire. There was no answer, just an eerie long silence. A small moment had passed, and now my stomach was turning, but I was too afraid to turn around. My mother just stared and then called out to my father. Donald? In the moment it didn't click in my brain that Claire and my father were out of the house and at a concert in a neighboring town. They would not be returning until morning. Now I was really scared. Mainly because neither of us had our cell phones on us. Our only hard line was in the kitchen on the opposite side of the house where my mother was looking. In this moment, my mother jolted up slightly as if something was moving behind me and called for me to move to her. Without hesitation I did and was able to turn around and look down our long hall that leads to the opposite side of the house. There was nothing there. No lights were on in that side of the house, so it was pitch dark. I finally snapped out of my shock and asked my mother, What is it? I will never forget the way she never broke her stare down the hall, as she said, Someone's in the house. We both sat there for a moment, and I tried my best to adjust my eyes to the darkness, but I couldn't. And that's when I felt it. Something was staring back at me. It was the weirdest thing. I couldn't see anything on that side of the house, yet I knew something was standing there and staring right back at us on the couch. In that moment, fight or flight kicked in, and I asked my mother to stay on the couch as I reached for the baseball bat that was leaning against the wall in the room. Luckily for me, my family are big sports fans, and we have memorabilia throughout our home. So I grabbed the bat and made my way down our hall. The only issue was, there wasn't a light switch to the other side of the house until I reached the other side of the hallway. Against all things telling me that we should run out of the house and to the neighbors to call the cops, I inched down the hall with my baseball bat, gripping it so tight that I could hear my grip when it would move. I was ready to beat the shit out of anything that stood in my way. The only thing giving me the balls to do it though was the thought of my mother being in danger. I didn't know who or how many people were there. All I could do was keep slowly moving forward to the dark side of our house and to the nearest light switch. Even though the hall was only 10 or 15 feet long, it felt like miles. I kept my eyes open, never blinking once that I can recall, but always feeling whatever was in the darkness was just standing there, staring back at me. I finally reached the light switch and turned it on. No one was there, but at that exact moment, a large crash came from farther back in my parents' room, and I began to run toward it. My mother was screaming, begging for me to stay. When I got to my parents' bedroom door, it was also pitch black. Luckily, there was a light switch available, and I was able to turn it on, illuminating my parents' bedroom. No one was there, but I could hear the sounds of the outside coming in through a door that leads out of my parents' bathroom to the pool deck and the backyard. It was wide open and the glass panels on the door were broken. There was no one there. We called the police, and whoever was in our house used no forced entry, but made a fast exit, and the police had no leads as to who it could have been. We still have no idea who the person was, or how they got into the house, but we will never 
forget that night. A few years back, I rented an apartment from a friend of mine. He had recently bought it and had just finished completely renovating it. He put it up for sale but couldn't find a buyer, so I offered to rent it in the meantime. After moving in, I realized there was something wrong with the lady next door. She was about 45, but looked so much older. She would sit up all night listening to Christian radio shows and talking loudly to someone. It got to the point where I couldn't sleep, so I went over to her place and asked her to keep it down. She opened her door and I got a quick peek inside. Her walls all had crosses painted in different colors, and words like Jesus and angels were scribbled everywhere in what looked like crayon. The windows were all painted black, letting no light in at all. There were damp, yellow-stained carpets that had to be at least 50 years old. Dog shit and cockroaches everywhere, though she had no dog. I asked her to please keep it down. She just looked at me, and then after a moment, shut the door. Then she proceeded to turn the radio up even louder than before. The next night, I had my girlfriend staying over. I wake up in the middle of the night, and see a shadow of a person next to the bed, looking at us sleeping. I think I'm hallucinating, as I usually do in the dark when I'm sleepy. But then the shadow starts talking. It's my neighbor, and she's holding something in her hand. She broke in in the night, and who knows how long she was standing there. You should lock your doors at night, she says, and then leaves. The next morning, I hear someone making strange noises at my bedroom window. It's my neighbor, and she's talking to herself in tongues. She has a plastic bag in her hand, with a rotting dead dog inside. It's hot as hell outside, and I can smell the death coming from the bag. She's obviously very insane. I go upstairs and knock on another person's door, and ask, what the hell is going on? The guy is just as scared as I am. Apparently, she broke into his apartment one evening as well, while he was watching TV with his kids. He got up from the couch to get a snack, only to find her behind the couch, staring at him, holding a power drill. Now I know what she had in her hand in my bedroom. At this stage, I'm basically shitting myself. I call the cops, and they know all about her. Apparently, she's a violent schizo, and she wasn't taking her meds. But they say they can't force her to take her meds, or enter her apartment without her permission, because she owns it. The only thing they can do is get her when she leaves her house. So I sit up for the next three days, waiting for her to go outside. Then it happens. I hear her leaving at 2 a.m. She was going across the street to, I guess, buy some cigarettes from the 7-Eleven. I instantly called the cops. In what seemed like less than two minutes, three cop cars arrive and a special van. They restrain her and throw her in the van and quickly drive off. I'm guessing to some type of institution. And in less than a minute, it's over, like she was never there. After that, I never saw her again, but I still wake up from nightmares where I see her standing there, watching me sleep.